Okay, this is start of chapter 12. We're going to do section 12.1 in this lesson. We're going to talk about gases and the states of matter. Okay, this objective, we're going to use the kinetic um, molecular theory to explain the behavior of gases, and I'll show you what that kinetic molecular theory means and what it is here. Describe how mass affects the rate of diffusion and effusion and explain how gas pressure is used to measure and calculate the partial pressure of gas. So these three things are what we're going to main part of that. I'm going to talk about kinetic energy also, all this vocabulary we're going to go over. Also, we're going to get to the main idea here is that gases expand, diffuse, they exert pressure, and cannot be and can be compressed because they're in a low density state consisting of tiny, constantly moving particles. Okay, so this is the basis of kind of the, the atoms part of the gases. Why, when we get down to the atomic molecular level, we're going to talk about the behavior of gases here. And the kinetic molecular theory explains the different properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Um, the atomic composition affects the, the chemical properties. We know that already from our chemical reactions. Atomic composition also affects the physical properties, same thing. Uh, the kinetic molecular theory describes behavior of matter in terms of particles in motion. So everything, all the stuff around us that we touch, that we feel, that we see, is all particles in some kind of motion, even if they're only vibrating in place. Gases consist of small particles separated by vast amounts of empty space compared to the size of the particles. Yeah, they're too far apart to experience significant attractive forces or repulsive forces. So they don't have the, the gas particles don't act independently of each other is what that means. They're in constant random motion and they undergo elastic collisions. Okay, so the elastic collisions mean that when they hit each other or hit the sides of a container, no energy is lost. No kinetic energy is lost. Kinetic energy is the energy something has when it's moving. Okay, so these particles, wherever they are, the atoms or molecules, they bounce off each other in containers with no loss of energy. Kinetic energy depends on the mass and velocity. And here's the equation for it. Ke equals one half the mass m times velocity squared. This is the same kinetic energy you'd use to calculate kinetic energy if you were running or your, how fat your kinetic energy of a car or kinetic energy of gas molecules. When we talk about temperature, we're talking about the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample of matter. That's what we use when we measure temperature. We're actually talking about kinetic energy of, of that particle of matter, whether it's solid, liquid, or gas. Um, the kinetic theory, the KMT, the kinetic molecular theory summary, this is just uh, it's the high points of what we just went over. Matter is made up of particles having negligible mass that are in constant random motion, and they can vibrate, they rotate, or translate or move about. The particles are separated by great distances. The particles collide uh, perfectly elastically. That means there's no forces acting on it during the collisions. They don't lose any any energy when they collide with each other or the sides. The temperature of a substance is related to the molecular velocity, right? That was the kinetic energy and it was related to the faster it's moving, the more kinetic energy it has, and the more that the higher the temperature will be. <clears throat> Okay, so again, great amounts of space exist between gas. When we compress something, we reduce the amount of empty space between particles, um, so they collide um, more frequently, and they have higher pressure. When they hit the sides of the container more often, they have higher pressure. When they are expanded, they're the same number of particles in that same container, uh, have a bigger volume to move in, they don't hit the sides as often, they have, have less pressure. Gases flow easily past each other. We know that diffusion is the movement of one material through another. This is diffusion if somebody uh, sprays perfume or you know Axe deodorant or whatever on one side of the room. Pretty soon you smell it all across the room. That's diffusion. 
Effusion is gas escaping through a tiny opening. This is what happens if you let air out of a tire or out of a balloon or something like that. That's effusion. Graham's law of effusion states that the rate of effusion of a gas is in per, inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass. So what you need to remember is this, the rate of effusion and the molar mass here, this means that as molar mass increases, the rate of effusion goes down. So as mass goes up, the rate goes down and backwards and the and the inverse of that as the mass of the particles decreases the rate of effusion increases these are inverse relationships and it's kind of stated down here at the bottom also of if you have two different ones and they're how their masses and relate and uh, rates of effusion are related but we're not going to do too much on that okay Pressure is defined as the force per unit area. We talk about gas particles exert pressure when they collide with the walls of their container. And the particles in the Earth's atmosphere exert pressure in all directions, and it's called air pressure. And there's less air pressure at high altitudes when you, when you go up to um, Truckee or the mountains or the ski areas. You, um, your ears pop when you go up because there's less air pressure there. If you take a bag of chips, buy a bag of chips in Yuba City, you take it up to the mountains, it seems to expand. That's because there's less air pressure at the higher altitudes. Um, Torricelli invented the barometer. Barometer measures air pressure, and it measures it in um, millimeters of mercury. And the air pressure pressures, the air pressure pushes down here, and then it moves, this, this column of mercury moves up and down depending on how much air pressure is pushing down on it. So when the, when the weather people say that there's high pressure um, in the area, high pressure is good weather because the air is pushing down, it heats up, it expands, that makes it hot, hotter and more stable air. When the air pressure is a low pressure system moves over, the air is rising up and it creates um, rainstorms and, and uh, weather phenomenon like that. The barometer is used to measure air pressure. Uh, manometer is used to measure gas pressure in a closed container. And this is a setup to if the gas pressure, if the gas expands, we put more gas in, the pressure goes up. If we put more gas in or the gas gets heated up, either way, we increase the pressure here and um, it compresses that over there. Okay, so the unit of force, SI unit of force is a Newton. The Pascal is the unit of pressure, and one Pascal is one Newton per meter squared, and that's not a very big amount of pressure. One Newton, a square meter is like about a yard square, three feet by three feet, a little over three feet by three feet, and you put 2.2 pounds on that meter, you know, square meter is not very much pressure at all. So most of the time we use... Um, in chemistry, we use atmospheres mostly to measure, press, measure pressure, and the, the relationships between one atmosphere and milligrams of mercury and, and kilopascals is here. One atmosphere is equal to 760 milligrams of mercury or 101.3 kilopascals, and that's mostly what we use in chemistry. We use the kilopascals because one pascal is not very much, so we use this as a thousand pascals. 103, uh, 101.3 thousand pascals is what they're trying to say there. Here's the table of um, different things going back and forth. You know, pounds psi, one atmosphere, what it, it, the at, what the, uh, um, the different conversions here. Dalton's law of partial pressures states that the total pressure of a mixture of gas gases is equal to the sum of the pressures in all the gases in the mixture. Okay, the partial pressure gas depends on how much gas you have, the number of moles, the size of the container, the temperature, and it's independent of the type of gas. So it doesn't matter what kind of gas it is. And it's just a simple math, the total pressure of, of you know, these three or these two 
gases, helium and nitrogen, whatever the pressure, you know, the pressure of the helium, whatever that had independent, if the helium was just there without the nitrogen, you'd get a certain pressure. And if the nitrogen was out there without the helium, you'd get a certain pressure. And combined together, they, the pressure on the whole container is those two pressures added up. So the partial pressures, you just add up the pressures that each one, each gas would have had if they were totally independent. You know, if they were in the container by themselves, they would, they pretty much act like they, like the other gas isn't there because they're so, the gas molecules are so spread out that it really doesn't really matter that there's another gas in there. It does that it, it as far as the pressure that that gas puts on. So helium puts on whatever pressure it's going to do. Nitrogen puts on whatever pressure it do, is doing, bouncing on the sides of the container. And together, they just add those two pressures up to get the total pressure. So the partial pressure from helium and the partial pressure from nitrogen add up to the total pressure. That's all Dalton's law says. So they calculate, and we're going to use these later on, in the, I think the next chapter, to calculate the amount of gas produced in a chemical reaction. Okay. Okay, the average kinetic energy of particles in a substance is measured by its temperature, right? That's what the kinetic energy and temperature, same thing. How fast it's moving determines the temperature. Um, as one mole of hydrogen in the same container. This is demonstration of what? So it doesn't matter which one it is. It's going to be, be Dalton's law of partial pressures, right? It doesn't matter what kind it is. They have the same pressure. If we have the same amount of stuff and they're in the same container, they'll have the same partial pressure. Okay, so I want to kind of inter, in, do, stop this slideshow for a minute. And disregard those and kind of go over this um, simulation here. This is what um, the gas particles look like. They're kind of bouncing around in this container here as a gas. And it's only at 55 Kelvin. I'm going to heat it up a little bit here and get it going. More like room temperature. Okay. So this is gas particles. They bounce randomly around it off of each other. If I change it to the liquid state, this is neon gas. If they kind of vibrate in place, but they flow across each other. If I put it in solid, you see they're still moving, but they're kind of vibrating in place and not they're kind of fixed. They're fixed in position. That's what we have in a solid. So all the solid stuff we touch, we work with and stuff. It's actually the molecules are just vibrating in place. If it's liquid, they're vibrating, but they're kind of, you know, next to each other, and you can you can flow around each other. And if it's a gas, the gas particles are way far apart. They're bouncing off of each other randomly. So I just kind of wanted to show you that as the end to of what of what we're doing these three states and the kinetic molecular theory, how that what that work looks like in this simulation. Okay, so answer the questions. On